Hello there everyone, welcome to this week's Gran Turismo 7 Daily Race Sea Race and Strategy Guide where we're off to Switzerland and it's Deep Forest Raceway. We're in a group 2 machinery for this one, we've got 14 laps to get round tyre wear at times 7, fuel at times 2, just the racing soft tyres available, there is a mandatory pit stop in this one, BOP is on, damage is light so no more heavy damage, maybe that experiment is over, it's a rolling start and slipstream is real. For your settings, the only thing you can change is the brake balance. Now, we have done this race before in the past. Now, the tie wear was at times six that time, I think. But there has been a few kind of changes to the tie wear model probably since the last time we went here. Definitely wasn't a bad race, but I'd probably prefer to see Group 4 just for a, an original race. We've never done Group 4 around here. We have done Group 2. We have done Group 3. But let's move on to the race action, into the 7 o'clock race as usual. And what you're going to see straight away is that everybody is in the Mercedes CLK. Myself included, and this kind of brings me to the video that I put out last week, and it's the mistakes that PD keep making. We've got a fairly classic example here, to be perfectly honest with you, because this is the very first race of this week, and pretty much every driver on this grid knew, as soon as he's seen this race, the car to be in was the Mercedes CLK. It's so overpowered around here, it's got so much more horsepower, it's so much quicker down the straight, it's just very, two very long blasts down the straight here. This is probably going to be the only car that's going to be competitive in the race. Now, I do believe the sort of GT500 cars, the, the 2016 cars, can probably put in a very similar lap time because they'll be so much quicker through the middle sector. But they just can't race this car because they just get stuck behind the CLKs in the middle sector and then they just get overtaken down the straights. Now, you've got Tijani in front of us there, you know, all that PD have to really do is kind of just reach out to somebody who's doing these races week in, week out and go, OK, we want to do Group 2 around Deep Forest Raceway. Is there anything, you know, if you, do you have any recommendations? And if you went to Tijney, if you went to myself, if you went to anybody who's got a reasonable knowledge of this game, they're going to go, well, if the Mercedes CLK is available, it's going to be a one-make race. So why not? ban the Mercedes CLK or just make it the 2016 cards or just make it the 2008 cards and you know what if you want to make it a one make why not make it the McLaren F1 long tail or the Mercedes DTM not the Mercedes the Audi DTM car just because we're doing something different but as I said it's the mistakes that Poly for the Digital keep making Group 2 is a hot mess and nearly as messy as that move from uh, the German down into the hairpin on me. If you want to watch that back, look how far back it came on the radar. But yeah, within within an hour, we've got a one-make race here. And I know you're probably going, well, Womble's always a one-make race because people always go into the meta car. This is true, but in this kind of case, you have no choice but to use the Mercedes CLK to be competitive. In like Group 3, you're maybe giving up a couple of attempts, you know, which means you can use different cars. It might not be the meta car, but at least you can kind of still race different cars. Sometimes it's the case for Group 4, not so often these days with the Mazda 3, but here's just the example of why you have to be in the Mercedes CLK, is we blast past a 2016 NSX as if it didn't exist. Down into the hairpin, that's how easy it is to overtake. Now, those cars are very fast through the middle sector, but if they're looking at the rear wing of a couple of uh, CLKs, then they can't utilise that speed and then they just get mugged on the straights. Now, come down into the hairpin here at the end of lap four, Mario Sonic is going to put a lovely move on as we try to squeeze him as much as we possibly could, but he got the car down the inside, got the braking spot on, and Mario Sonic takes that P10 off his. Now, as ever, I hadn't done a whole lot of practice, so I was still definitely trying to find my feet in this one. Now, I wanted to highlight this little moment here. Bembo Baggins, friend of the channel, uh, really super fair driver. Uh, just wanted to kind of highlight the fact that he realised he was going to go careering into the back of somebody there, so decided to sacrifice his own race by throwing the car off to the right-hand side instead of re-ending somebody, which is exactly what you should do in those circumstances. You don't see it particularly often, to be honest. People usually just use the car in front as a brake if they realise they have missed their braking point. Now, coming to the end of lap 7 here, starting lap 8, I noticed a whole lot of drivers had gone into the pits, and that's going to promote us up into P2. Now, I was looking at my tyre wear, and I'm thinking, my tyre wear's actually quite good. I think I might just try and use this opportunity of some clean air to uh, get some clean laps in, and I'm going to 
basically not change the tyres and I was kind of under the, the impression that nobody would change their tyres. Uh, Blue Racer had just pitted and uh, he'd only came out 1.4 seconds behind me so I thought well nobody's changed their tyres then, is that what everybody's doing? The tyre wear's not too bad. Now Blue Racer did catch me a few laps later so rather than kind of uh, costing him any time or costing myself any time as he went for the overtake I decided to pit at the end of lap 10 give us a chance to look at this pit stop now I'm not going to change the tyres here because I can see the tyres are going to last to the end I've only got uh, 3 laps to go after this or 4 laps to go after this and our stationary time is 1.6 seconds now if you do change the tyres let's take a look at what the difference is for changing the tyres how much time do you lose changing the tyres or how much time do you save by not changing the tyres it's 6.4 seconds to change the tyres so the pit loss is incredibly small round here in group 2 and in group 2 it does tend to have a very quick pit stop in general uh, but with the tyre change you're only going to lose 12.5 seconds if you don't change the tyres it's like an old GT Sport pit stop it's down at 7.8 and of course fuel is going to be no issue whatsoever in this one now I was pretty much under the impression that no driver in front of me had changed their tyres and I was kind of thinking that's why I'm kind of catching up with them Sonic's struggling a little bit we're in P7 and uh, that's where we well that's where we came out the pit stop and that's where we're going to finish this one so I'm thinking okay the strategy for this one is pretty much locked in you don't change the tyres you save yourself 4.7 seconds the tyres are okay towards the end you're definitely losing a bit of lap time but that seems to be the way to go. I was pretty sure at the end of this race that was the strategy. But I decided, you know what? Let's go and check what other people were doing just to be on the safe side. And when I took a look at the tyre wear at the end of lap 7, I seen that everybody was really struggling with the tyres and they had sort of burned around about 65, 70% of them by the end of lap 7. Shelties were a little bit better. The Spanish driver here in the NSX, his tyres are pretty bad. The driver just in front of me, his tyres are okay, but for some reason my tyres were like I'm playing a different game. Now, I'm generally not bad at looking after tyres, but that almost seems a bug. I was actually saying just the other day on live streams that I was good at, really good at looking after tyres on GT Sport, but I didn't really think that kind of transferred over that much on to uh, GT7. So yeah, I was going to recommend everybody don't change the tyres, save the 4.7 seconds, but I'm really glad I looked at the race because it looks like most people are going to actually have to change the tyres. But let's move on to the strategy options uh, and we'll just discuss that in a bit more depth. So yeah, as I said, I think the one stop with the tyre change is going to be the sort of uh, strategy for most drivers. You're going to be kind of forced to change those tyres due to the front tyre where they're definitely not going to last the full 14 laps. Obviously, the optimal lap is going to be to change on lap 7, just split it down the middle, but depending on your race circumstances, stop it earlier by 1-2 to two laps or later by 1-2 to two laps. Maybe better for you to just try and find a little bit of clean air. Uh, the dirty air is an effect here, it's not too bad to be honest with you, but uh, you will feel it and if you can get a couple of clean laps, it may well be beneficial for your race. Your other option is what we did of course, it's the one stop with no tyre change. Now I don't think this option is open to very many people out there. And I'm interested to do the race again myself to see if there was some kind of bug going on there or whether there's just something about this car and the way I drive that looks after the tyres very, very well. But if this is an option for you, you can save 4.7 seconds in the pits and it gives you the flexibility to change on any lap. Uh, you will suffer towards the end, anybody that's changed the tyres is going to be quicker than you, but not by a huge margin. So this is definitely a strategy that can gain you some positions, but as I said, I don't think it's going to be available to too many of you out there. So that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully the information I've shared here has been useful to you in some way, shape or form to help you come up with the best strategy for your particular driving style. It's a good race. I do enjoy the CLK around this track. It's disappointing this is going to become a one make, but that is what it is. PD continue to make the same mistakes. But yeah, we'll definitely live stream this one a couple of times over the course of the week. Do join me for them if you can. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye now.